Um, so that like, <laughs> so again, we. Uh, but I feel like you have to give people step by step instruction. You can't say, "Oh, this is what I did," and you don't teach them how I did it, how I did this. And uh, but yeah, that's how I built relationship with everyone that I have a long term relationship or I get yeah relationship with. So it started in college. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today I want to introduce, I don't want to waste any time. I want to go ahead and just dive in. Just like Trey Song's going to dive in. Uh, I want to go ahead and introduce Miss Crystal Beecham. She not only is the author of For the Other 98%, the ultimate guide for student athletes to go pro in entrepreneurship. She's also the founder of Student Athletes Unite, and she's a former tri student athlete. So, Miss Crystal, welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. How you doing? I am good. I'm so happy to be here, Jonathan. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I mean, I, I I see the work that that you're doing in this space, and I, I hear a lot of people mention your name, and I've seen you on some blogs and heard you on some other podcasts. I said, let me go ahead and re reach out to my sister. Let me go ahead and get Crystal on, and let's see what's cracking over there uh, inside of Crystal's. Head. So, Crystal, did I miss anything with the introduction? I, I know I gave a, 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 sk a skim down version, but 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 what else did I miss? Talk to me. Well, you actually did an amazing job, so I do okay. appreciate that. Um, and I see that you did some research because triathlete, I you know, you went way back in that research. Um, but uh, <laughs> but um, everything you said was on point. Again, my business actually helps student athletes create business and career opportunities, and we do that do that uh, through two ways. One is an online accelerated program that teaches student athletes how to get paid, stay eligible, and explore entrepreneurship as a career. And we understand that every student athlete, every student athlete is not going to become an entrepreneur. Um, so we make sure that we connect them to paid internships, graduate assistantships, and fellowships uh, through a monthly created newsletter. And then um, I'm currently a venture capitalist in residence at a venture capital fund in New York. Um, the, the work is remote. So I can work pretty much from anywhere as long as I get my work done. So that's the beauty of it. And yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Okay. Well, well talk a little, I mean, you, you just said a lot, but talk a little bit about being a venture capital. What does that mean? So it's crazy because it's, it's a new space for myself. It's a new space for my family. Um, I just had a conversation with my uncle before I got on this call and he said, so what do you do? Um, so what we do in the fund is we help, under representative uh, founders uh, find capital. So whether it is a woman of color, a man of color, um, just a woman in general, uh, because as you look at the statistics that a lot of different ethnicities and a lot of different people don't get funding. And, um, and so we invest in startup companies, whether it's dealing with art um, artificial intelligence, possibly the next Facebook, um, where it can be in like fitness, um, anything that would work in our parameters of a startup company. Um, so before they even get to us, they have to go through a, a friends and family round, which is like trying to gather up like $50,000, $100,000. And then when they get to us, it's more so like, okay, how can we help you scale? How much money can we give you to scale? So it can be anywhere from 100000 all the way up to 500000 Hmm. Wow. Okay. I never, okay. Teach me something then. Teach me something. I'm trying, you know, trying yeah. to educate the masses. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I, cause I've heard of venture capitalism, but I never, I never knew necessarily uh, just what you broke down, especially with the friends and family um, and, and, and all of those, those other pieces. But I, I also want to go back to something that you said <clears throat> earlier when you were just talking about that you help student athletes in becoming entrepreneurs. <sighs> How did you know that this was something that you wanted to, how did you know this was, this was a venture that you wanted to pursue? 
Yeah, so I actually started a business in college. Um, so that kind of got my first taste of entrepreneurship in college. And I realized that I know if I can do it, still averaging about 15 points a game, still doing double double, still breaking records, still, okay, humble, humble brags, but still like maintaining a 3.5 above GPA, still being involved on campus, not only off the court, but also uh, off the court, but also on the court, I knew other student athletes can do the same. And so uh, when I went to the University of Arkansas, I saw the same thing that some athletes wanted to create businesses, but they didn't have the resources in the athletic department. And so when you think of the University of Arkansas, you think of an SEC school, and you think they are in the top five power conference. And it's like they have all of these resources and access to all of this, um, all of these mentors and um, programming. But when student athletes wanted to create a business, they were like, uh, we can't help you with that. And so I saw that as a problem. And I felt like I can be a solution to that. And that's why I started like Student Athletes Unite. Okay, so you said the University of Arkansas. Now, every time somebody says anything about the University of Arkansas, I always have to say shout out to, to Krista. Uh-oh, yes. this is my ringing the alarm right now. It's ringing the alarm because I already know what time it is. Um, but shout out to Krista. Shout out to Erica Nelson. Shout out to Brandon mm -hmm. Floyd. And then also shout out to Laquan, my guy who, who runs track. Uh, so definitely want, want to shout them out. And also lastly, want to just shout out uh, Joy. She runs track as well. Um, nice. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had to I had to go through it, but you it, have all the contact. You nah, have all the contact. no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dabbling in your Rolodex. That's all this is. But uh, <laughs> so you, you're talking about entrepreneurship, and I can't help but think about the first, the, the first entrepreneurship venture I tried. Right, what was middle school? The blue raspberry blow pops. I, I, I had the blue raspberry blow pops. I bought two packs from Kroger. I think it was buy one pack. It, it's like $2 or buy two for three, whatever. I took the blow pops. I took them to school, started hustling them. And then one of the bullies, he was like, John, give me a blow pop or I'm going to tell. And I'm like, but you're a bully. I don't, I don't understand. Um, anyway, so I want to ask you, what, what was your, what was your first entrepreneur, entrepreneurial venture? Cause I know, I know you come from a long line of entrepreneurs, right. um, but, but when was like, what was the first thing that you tried to really push or the first thing you tried to market and move? Is it, it's kind of funny cause I honestly didn't have one of those type of stories where, you know, I was a young kid doing <laughs> this. I did help my grand, I did do Girl Scouts. But I didn't like talking to people. Mm -hmm. So I would like try to, but I knew I knew how to leverage my network. So it's like, okay, I don't really like talking to people and I don't have the network to someone that has money to give me money for my Girl Scout cookies. However, my mom did, my dad did. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would say, hey mom, can you take this to your work? And can you do this for me? And then what was funny, she would come back and I'm like, mom, you only got two people. Oh. Why? You think, you, I know you're talking to more people. You could mom, get what's up? What's, what's up? Yeah. So, um, so even though I didn't really like selling, I just knew that I knew people in my network that have more, kind of have more of a network than I did. Um, and then of course, like my aunt, she used to have all the garage sales. So we would try to get people to, you know, hey, we would try to negotiate, like, okay, so we're selling it for 10, but we'll sell it to you for eight. <laughs> and then, so it was like, I, I worked on, I did work on a few negotiation skills, um, but I didn't have one of those sort of like, oh, well, I did lemonade stand and I did all this. But I feel like my first business in college was my first business to like myself, that it was my product, it was my business, everything depended on me. Um, but I did have it where some other people helped me that weren't, in sports so they had a lot more time than i did than i did and so i remember i would be like taking like sales calls before a game or i would like actually rush into the middle of during halftime we like text them like hey did you get that sale and then i would hurry and run back so thankfully my coach didn't see because she would have been like living but mm -hmm. i just knew that i still wanted to make this sale i still wanted to create income while i was in college so again like I had to sacrifice some things, and instead of me going to sleep before uh, before a game, 
I sometimes would be reading a book or I would sometimes be making sales call or texting like some people on my team. Same with after the game. Yeah, we lost, but it's no point of crying over spilled milk. Like, I still got to get this money. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and hold on, wait. So, it was, so was this in high school or was this in college? That, that, this that was you in college. Talking? Yeah, this was in college. Definitely in college. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you're running, running back to the locker room, get, getting these uh, texts off, getting these calls off to, to make, make sure you close the sale. So you're talking about a huge transferable skill, I think, just selling in itself. Right. Um, and then also, have, 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 as you've grown, of course, from being little Crystal to where you are now, grown Crystal, um, <laughs> what would you say – shifted the gears for you from going from from the young lady who who wasn't comfortable talking to people and selling to where you are now what like what 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 was the switch um i think the fact that you can't grow into your you can't grow in your comfort zone um and i learned that in college too like yes you can know as many people um but if they don't know you if they don't know if they don't have a relationship with you they can't speak up for you um, so I always tell people that, you know, it's not about what you know anymore. It's not about who you know, but it's about who knows you. Um, because again, like, I feel like I know Barack Obama. I feel like I know Michelle Obama, but they don't even know me, mm. but I know, but I feel like I do know people in high places. Like I may know an AD somewhere, or I may know that a senior woman is administrator, or I may know a managing partner of a venture capital firm, but if they know, but do they know me and do, can they speak on a relationship with me and can they speak on my uh, work ethic? So um, that's what I've learned during my time. And it's like, Crystal, in order for you to build a relationship with people, in order for you to have that, sorry, to have that relationship with someone, you need to make sure you talk to people. You can't, you can't, you can't do that with, you can't ask for help or you can't get help or you can't go to the next level if you don't talk to anybody. Mm. so it was kind of like crystal you just need to suck it up get out your feelings because you need this connection or you're just going to be stuck here and, and crystal i promise you just read my mind because i was going to ask you i was going to ask you how, how does how does a student athlete or how does a young professional or somebody out there how do they build relationship like what what would be the first step that you would suggest for somebody to build a relationship if 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 and let's just make this real dramatic. Let's say they don't have social media. Mm -hmm. how, how do they go about building a relationship? What, what's one thing that they could do? And I told, uh, I think I had this conversation with somebody through social media the other day. And he asked, like, how was I able to build, like, a big network uh, through social media? And I was like, it didn't start through social media. It started offline. Mm. It, but my offline relationship developed into online friendship, I guess you can say, like they started, they became my followers. Um, and so for me, you're a student athlete, you know, people are going to come to your game, you uh, come to your games, you know, the athletic director may be there, you know, the SWA may slide in, see something, slide back out, you know, there's going to be boosters there. So just go get the names of the boosters, go get the names of the AD, go get the name of the SWA, go get their emails, and just say, hey, thank you for coming to my game and introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Crystal Beecham. I am a middle childhood uh, education major. And I just want you to know that I play, uh, I played and I saw you in the stands and I appreciate you coming and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's can be, that can be your introduction right there. And of course they're gonna send back like, oh my gosh, like I appreciate this. Thank you for sending it out. I can't wait to see you play the next time. Mm. And I feel like that's a great introduction if you don't have any social media or anything. Uh, because again, like, or I know what I would do is, um, again, division two is a little bit different. The division one, I mean, division two, our girls, the girls play first, and then sometimes our boys will play after. Mm. So I would actually go shake their hands and say, hi, thank you so much for coming. Hey, thank you so much for coming. Um, and that's what I did, again, offline. So they saw my face. I had a conversation with me. I made sure I showered so I didn't stink. Um, so, that, like, <laughs> so again, we, uh, but I feel like you have to give people step-by-step -step instructions. You can't say, oh, this is what I did, and you don't teach them how I did it, how mm -hmm. I did this. And, uh, but yeah, that's how I built relationships with everyone that I have 
a long term relationship or I get yeah, a relationship with. So it started in college. Mm, I, I, I like that. I really like that. But also, you, what you just said made me think of something else. Because you say you got to give people step-by-step -step instructions. Do you think, and I know I'm asking you this question because you're in the space and, and you've worked in the space um, in regards mm -hmm. to student-athlete development and, and just helping develop young professionals. Do you think that, that student-athletes are, 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 are too spoon-fed? Yes. Yes. And, I, and, I, and I'll give you a really good example. Mm -hmm. And I promise, I love my time at the University of Arkansas. I promise you I did. It was the best experience ever. Um, I still have really good relationships there. Um, but there was a time where we had to class check individuals. Um, and most of them were either, they were freshmen, um, they were transfers, or people that just, not, just didn't like coming to class. And there was one individual, he had mental health issues and he was during that time he was just struggling and we had the option of checking them before their class or checking them after and i had missed the going before because i had again i even though i have specific people to check i still have to get work done for my manager or supervisor and so i'm finishing that work and i was like you know what? i'll just check them after because i still have time and then after i check them i'll just leave to go home because usually i used to leave around like 12 or 1 o'clock anyways and all of a sudden his advisor came running over and he was like did you check him today and i said no i'm going to check him in a few minutes after i get this work done and he was like you know what because of you he missed his test and it was his final and i was like well you give, gave me the option so why 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 is that a problem and he said well if you would have checked them we could have if you would have checked them at the beginning we could have called and maybe had someone go pick him up or something to come to get him to his test. And in my mind, it's like, okay, why am I checking grown men and women mm. to make sure they go to class, knowing if they don't go to class, they don't, if they don't go to class, they can't get their work done. If they can't get their work done, they cannot pass. If they cannot pass, they cannot play. And, but again, some people don't see that. Yes, your, your job is online if you don't get these kids to pass. And one of my friends, she's a healthcare professional, and she ended up going to my manager because my manager scolded me because I didn't check him. And she was like, you know, he is always going to have this mental issue. He's going to, he had it before he came here. He's having it now. He's going to have it after. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what Crystal did or didn't do, we have to put some responsibility on him. And then, of course, as individuals, um, your professor or your, not even your professor, but your employer is not going to be like, well, Crystal, are you coming to work to get, uh, coming to work today? I see that you're not here. I'm just checking on you. Are you coming? If they don't, I mean, they may check up on you, but they're going to fire you. So it's like, why are we, why are we coddling these athletes knowing we're not preparing them for the real world? Um, and that was another thing that I had a problem with, like working in college athletics, um, specifically like in that division one role, um, because I don't believe in that. Um, because again, I wasn't raised like that. I understand everyone was raised differently. Um, but I feel like you should prepare these kids for the real world. And at the time, I think we were, weren't doing a good job of that. Mm, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think you said a lot there and, and I think, I think it's so, so necessary to, to put it out there and to know and understand because <laughs> if we continue to coddle throughout the years, then we're just setting them up and prolonging the, the inevitable. Uh, yeah. which, which ends up in, you know, the 30 for 30 broke on, mm -hmm. on ESPN and, and different things like that because everybody won't sign a contract like Allen Irison that's going to release like 30, 30 million or however much it is in like two years. And I'm like, what in he the is, world? He is like someone looked out for him. Someone definitely looked out for him and saw the future. That's amazing. Such, yeah. oh, such an amazing deal. Oh my God! I I don't know who was in his corner when that happened, but but somebody, somebody. I know he's thankful. I know he's thankful. Oh my goodness! Because I think he is. I mean, I'm not sure if he's broke now, but I mean, he spent money. He spent a lot of money. We know yeah. that for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure. I'm 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 sure, and I'm not I'm not trying to be in that man's pockets. But anyway, so I want I want to I want to segue because like we're talking about uh, Coddling and and Crystal because I know uh, you're 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 definitely one of the best in the country at, at setting student athletes up for success. 
So I, I want to take this two different ways. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go here first because I think this will be shorter, and then we'll we'll, we'll come back. And I want I really want to want to tap into your book, but brand image and likeness, brand name and likeness. Talk talk a little bit about that and and, and why you're why you're so necessary now. Right. Uh, I feel like I'm essential. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, I believe that it's necessary because. We can talk about the elite athletes. We know um, that the top, I guess, 2%, we know they're going to get there. That's that's inevitable. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that people look like me, but also people that grew up at a Division two or that are going to Division two school, that are going to Division three school, that may be in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And But they have a great social media following, I mean, social uh, media following, or they can go back and go back to their hometown and be able to run a football camp or a basketball camp or a tennis camp and actually get paid for it. Mm. So I look at that and then the fact that I also look at non-revenue uh, revenue generating sports, so like track and softball and tennis. And so some of them don't get full scholarships. So imagine that they are now able to make money off their name, image, and likeness and be able to pay for their school and not have them to get that much student loans. So that's what I think about for name, image, and likeness and how it can better benefit those middle student athletes, those middle and the bottom. Let's just say the middle and the bottom. Again, the top that the top athletes, they're going to get what they're going to get. But that's what I'm most passionate about and what I'm most um, excited about is that those lower tier student athletes. Definitely, de definitely. Because I mean, now it, it it seems like everybody, and I guess this is just me. This is me just sharing my own opinion here. Insert here, but because now it seems like every time I look up, well, one, the student athletes, you know, people are capturing these high resolution photos of mm -hmm. them in the game, and mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if, if if when you were going through college, it was the same was for me, but we wasn't getting all these likes and tens of thousands of followers on so because Instagram wasn't a thing. When I was in college, no. Twitter. Mm. Twitter was Twitter was all right. Yeah, yeah. Twitter, yeah. Twitter. I mean, but Twitter wasn't tw Twitter wasn't what it is now because I I feel like Twitter is gonna be one of those things that just continues because they got the trending topics. They've incorporated right. news. Twitter's right. not going nowhere. I'm sorry. Right. I don't think so. But um, just 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 uh, uh, thinking about thinking about that. Talk talk a little bit, Crystal, about for the other ninety eight percent. Right. Just, just share if you would just share two pivotal points that, that you think every student athlete needs to understand um because i well i know everybody needs to get get the book everybody needs to get the book we're gonna have the info in the show notes you need to go on amazon you need to order the book or contact crystal personally and I ask her to autograph it but just talk just really quick about two points um that, that student athletes re really need to take to put in their pocket and hold near and dear to their heart Right. Um, I think the first one, uh, making opportunities where you are. Um, and I believe, again, this is what I did. Um, and if you know my story, you know, I came, I come from a small town. Um, we have more cows than people. Uh, but I went, <laughs> I went to a university that was about the same size as my town. It was a very, it was a college town. Um, and it was, again, in the middle of nowhere. But it's like I made opportunities where I was, uh, where I was, whether it was starting a business, where it was networking with the AD and the dean of the business school. Um, and because of that, I was able, again, to start a business. I was able to learn about business, even though I wasn't a business major. Um, because, again, like, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere. You don't have nothing else to do. Like, you can't, you can't. I mean, you could go to like the nearest club, but I wasn't, a, I didn't, I, I was not a clubber. Um, so make opportunities where you, where you are. Um, but also I think the next one is like build relationships. Um, again, it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. And I think those are the top, well, top two. And then I'll add a third one, which is like using your resources on campus. Um, because not only you are a student, there are a lot of free resources that you can use, but be also because you're an athlete. So again, they are going to love you. I think there's this Drake line that says, my hometown love me like a college running back. 
Like, mm -hmm. so it's like use that to your advantage. If you come home, make sure you still network with those teachers or those principals that you liked and they liked you. Make mm -hmm. sure that um because again like they may be your they may be your buyers it may not be like right then but it may be down the line they may have children like oh well he went to play at UConn or she went to go play at UConn okay well I want her to come back and train my child and I would know she's a good person because I taught her so it just those things that you have to make sure that you can build your reputation and keep that reputation and maintain that reputation. Um, but again, using your resources because there are a lot of things that student athletes or students have access to and that they can minimize their expenses because they are a student um, and they can get a lot of resources for free. Mm. Oh my goodness. They love me in my hometown like a running back. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's a, yeah, that's a when, bar. That's a bar. When when Drake said that, I said, let me put that in my book right quick. Like I will cite Drake, but I need to people need to know this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because I mean just to, to like to that same point and to a point you made previously, because if you if you if you one, make sure that you have good relationships and that you operate with integrity and character and stuff like that when you leave, you know, like your high school or whatever it may be. But then you can return back and then that coach or that principal might have the keys to the gym to where you can have that camp and they might not charge yeah. you nothing and yes. allow that opportunity because now, you know, we're, we're in a different time now. But yeah, those, 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 those definitely are good. In that relationship piece. Oh, my goodness. When I tell you relationship has built my business, relationships has been able to get me to where I am today, relationships has been able to give me volunteer position, uh, like volunteer internship positions. And I again we've had I had this conversation with someone online is the fact that like, yes, your college your college degree will get you into some doors, but building relationships will get you into other doors those those degrees cannot. Mm. And so it's like build relationships why you can, where you can, because you never know who will be connected to who. I know people talk about their six degrees of separation with anybody, and I firmly believe that. Um, and again, that's why I'm a firm believer in building relationships and maintaining those relationships. Because again, networking is cool, but I don't like networking. I'm more about building relationships type of girl because that's just who I am. Christy, you speak in my language. Every time somebody's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be networking, I'm like, nah. No. I'm like, oh, no. I, don't, I don't do the networking where you're going to give me no. a card and then you're going to have something to throw in the trash later just to say that you, no, nah, hey, you got a card? No, no I, don't, I don't have a card. I no. do. I don't want to give it to you. So, no. uh, I don't even carry, I don't even carry cards anymore. Like, I have a line like, dang, I just gave my last card to him. But do you have LinkedIn or do you have your number? I can take your number. And that way, like, you have no choice but to see me in your inbox or to see me in like your text message. So um, yeah, I'm not a firm believer in business cards anymore. Cause like you said, they can take it and they'll lose it. I'm a, I sometimes lose my, I lose business cards. Heck, I lose my keys. So like. <laughs> I can't I'm, say that cause yeah. I, lose, I lose, I lose, I lose all of it. I lose my phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Hey, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there, but Crystal, I definitely have been enjoying having you on, but before I let you go and before you tell people where they can connect with you, mm -hmm. I have to run you through the two minute drill. Okay. Oh, goodness. okay. Yeah. 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 I got to run. Come on, man. You, you said you three sport athlete. I, I seen what the stats were. I seen someone <laughs> there. You, you putting up like 20, 22, 27. I was like, Oh my goodness. Get buckets. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, Oh my goodness. So this is just, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Going to be a little bit of okay. rapid fire. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. Then we're okay. done. Okay. Quick drama McGraw. I went to art school. So. Okay. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> All right. I'm as ready as I'll ever be, I guess. Oh, here we go. Favorite food? Oh, chicken. What kind of chicken? Fried chicken. Oh, wow. I'm not even going to touch that. Uh, a book that you're currently reading? Uh, Venture Deals. Uh, okay, okay. Favorite podcast? Mm. Sets for Life by Joy Walker. Mm. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Uh, what would, What's your Netflix go-to show of preference? Ooh. Crimson Tide. 
criminal minds. That's dark. Okay, cool. Um, and, and then lastly, <laughs> what what's one tip that you want to leave with the student athlete? What's one tip? Mm, be authentic. Wow, here it is. See, that was bad. Yeah, because I, I tell people all the time, I'm lame. I promise you I am. I just I just do dope stuff and I know dope people. I said, but me personally, my friends call me a lame duck. But they know I get stuff done and they know I know a lot and I know a lot of people. <laughs> it just sounds like you're a dope person. I'm not gonna call you lame. But that sounds no, I'm I'm serious. I'm not gonna because it just sounds like you're sounds like you're a dope person. I try to be. I try. I, t- I tell myself I'm dope. And every, t- every time you meet me, I'm like, Chris, you dope. But a friend, my friend, they're going to say otherwise. Because they were like, Crystal, but you cool, though. You cool, though. So. Oh, goodness. Who is one person that you would like to see on Beyond the Ball next? Hmm. Ooh. Most likely, Mikkel Allen. Uh, yeah, Mikkel. He's a Kel Allen, he's legit. He's okay. good. Okay, well you're gonna need to send me like send me an intro email or send me his information. Oh yeah, always. Last but not least, tell people where they can find you. Tell people uh, how they can connect with you or anything else you want to share with the people. Please feel free. Yeah, so you can connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Did I miss LinkedIn? Crystal Beecham, all one word. Um, and then, of course, if you want to learn more about what I do, you can go to www.studentathletesunite.com. You'll have, um, it has everything you need to know about what we do and how we do it. So, yeah, that's pretty much. Oh, also, get my Amazon book. I mean, get my book on Amazon uh, for the other 98%, and you can get that as well. So, that is pretty much where you can access all my content and where you can find me. Um, I do answer DMs too, so yeah. DMs are open for business inquiries. Always, always, 24 eight. Inquiries and connections, yeah. Because <laughs> people be getting wild. People be getting. That, that's true. I'm not, yeah, I, yep, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Crystal, well, thank you for uh, taking time to hop on. Everybody, be sure to connect with her. Uh, and then send her DM, let her know that you heard this episode. And, and also, uh, if you all feel that this episode or any of the other episodes have added value, we'd encourage you to subscribe, to rate, and review the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Crystal Beecham, and we're logging out on Beyond the Ball. Thank you.